house right now. Let's fill this sanctuary with praise. Apostolic. Let's flavor it with apostolic praise and worship. Let's take our liberty in the house of the Lord tonight. Come on, that's it. It's tongue-talking time and landmark. Hallelujah. God, fill this house. God, anoint this people, this local church family. Lord, what we're here tonight, celebrate what we're bringing into this sanctuary tonight. God bless it. God, lay your mantle upon it in the name. Oh, that's it. It feels good in the house. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we praise you. God, we fill this house anointed, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. On behalf of Brother and Sister Calhoun, and the Landmark family, we welcome you to this celebration here starting tonight and this weekend. We're glad you're here. Amen. And those of us that aren't from the local church, we want to say to you, first of all, uh, we're celebrating 19 years of pastoral ministry, great leadership. You don't get here under whatever this word means, janky leadership. 
This is, this is an apostolic cup, and I want this local church to know. I'm sure you're aware, but it bears repeating. Your pastor, that's right. Your pastor and his wife are held in the highest regard all across the apostolic movement, and rightly so. But I want to say that uh, Landmark, this pastor and his wife, they love you. And, and uh, what's going on here this weekend is fantastic. Amen. Let's pray together as we, as we go into this weekend and begin this weekend of celebration and, and, and honoring. Let's pray together right now for the hand of the Lord to be in every moment. God, we pray every preacher, every song, every element of this weekend, everything that's going on that has begun here, not just this weekend, but, Lord, the future that is unfolding in front of of Landmark Tabernacle. God, I pray right now. I pray, God, for your strong anointing. I pray for a clear path. I pray for the overtaking blessings of God, Lord, to be upon this people, this pastor and his wife, Lord, and this congregation, the family and friends that have gathered here. Lord, we've come to celebrate the good work that you have done. Look what God hath wrought in Texarkana. Look what God is doing, what God has begun. Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Praise God. God bless you. you may be seated. Let's do something real quick. Uh, those of you that are from the local church, you're from Landmark, would you please stand? Would you please stand? What a wonderful congregation. All of us, let's give them a hand. They're working hard this weekend. We know what they're doing. And we rejoice with you with what's happening here at your local assembly. God bless you. You may be seated. There's some folks here tonight, good friends of Brother and Sister Calhoun and probably good friends of this church also that Brother Calhoun has requested we hear from them. So we're going to call first Brother B.J. Wilmoth. Brother B.J. Wilmoth, would, would you come and give us a word while he's coming? This is a good man right here. And... Uh, I don't have old friends anymore. I have longtime friends. But anyway, we're glad that Brother Wilmoth is with us. And uh, he, um, I met Brother Wilmoth when I was a second grader. And this is how I met Brother Wilmoth. I was playing, remember the church on Cherokee Lane, Brother Wilmoth? He was the youth pastor. And uh, I was playing ball with some of my friends um, out on the lawn and I heard a noise coming from the offices downstairs and I went over and, and stood close to the window. What I heard was Brother B.J. Wilmoth praying, praying with travail, praying in the spirit and, and Brother Wilmoth, that has stayed with me to this day and I thought if I could only pray like this man, amen. That's a testimony, brother. Now, my wife will probably tell you I don't pray like this, man. But anyway, God bless you. We're glad you're here, Brother Will. Well, I want to say when you've got young people like the group that I had, uh, guess what? You'll get a hold of God. <laughs> oh, yeah. What an incredible night it is to be here with our dear friends, the Calhouns, and this wonderful church. And what I really am excited about, as I was praying, I asked God to put something inside of the congregation, something in their spiritual mind this weekend that begins to explode, that they can't contain it, that a passion for souls gets a hold of them, passion for apostolic revival, a passion for a great harvest, a passion that says no matter what anybody else says, what anybody else does, but let me tell you, Landmark has made its mind up that we're going to conquer this city, we're going to conquer this region, we're going to see a one God apostolic church built right here. Amen. I want that I want that landmark church to stand up. 
I want you to pray for yourself right now. Put your hand on your head and begin to pray, God, get a hold of our minds. Put a desire down within us. Get a hold of us like never before, God. We've got to have you. We've got to have a move of God. We've got to have children. We've got to have revival. We don't care what color they are. We don't care what social status they are. We don't care what economic status they have. But God, we got to have a harvest. we got to have a harvest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to do one thing as I sit down. I don't know what I was supposed to do, but that's what I did. Hallelujah. But I want you to do one thing. I want you to clap your hands. But I want you to understand this one thing. You can, when the president steps in the room, people clap their hands. Oh, yes. When other dignitaries step in the room, people clap their hands. When sports figures step out, people clap their hands. But one God apostolics are different. We clap our hands. We raise our voices and begin to give a shout. I want to hear it. Come on. Oh, let's do it. He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, hallelujah. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Well, Brother Clifford Clark, Brother Clifford Clark, come up here and give us a good word. You know, with this band following you, you guys are doing all right. Not bad for your first day. You're doing good. It makes you feel like taking off and preaching a little bit. But I'm not going to. That's Brother Clark's job. Come on, Brother Clark. Give us a good word. Let's give Brother Clark a hand. And everybody say praise the Lord. Aren't you glad for the Holy Ghost tonight? Why don't we lift our hands and do it one more time. Let's, let's give the Lord praise and worship tonight. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. I want to say tonight that it has been our privilege, my wife and I and our church in Ontario, California, to have had uh, the privilege to be friends with Brother and Sister Calhoun. They have been a blessing to us in our life and in our church that we pastor, and they've been a blessing to the apostolic ranks. Stepping in here tonight, I, I'm thankful for this great facility. This is my first time to see it, and I think that this is just tremendous what God has done. But once you get into the sanctuary, I'm also complimenting you on the anointing that is here, and I'm also complimenting you on the spirit of holiness that is here tonight. Everything looks good. It feels good. Let's stay with the apostolic direction. And I believe we're in safe hands with this church and the influence that Brother Calhoun has as he continues to minister. God bless you tonight. We're very, very happy for all that God is doing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Buxton. Come on up here. And after Brother Buxton, we're going to have Brother Jackson. Brother Jackson, get ready. Amen. I'm, I preached a revival for Brother Buxton. And there was one night, my message was rather underwhelming. And uh, his church was doing fine. And it wasn't one of my better nights. You got to understand, my standard for a better night isn't real high. But it was still... Not one of my better nights. And I looked over there, and Brother Buxton was laughing at me. <laughs> but it actually helped me, Brother Buxton. I lightened up. Come give us a good word. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord to everybody. This is a night worth celebrating. 
And I thought when we were driving here around this state, there is nothing as important as what is going on here tonight at Landmark Tabernacle. Let, let the world know we are dedicating this house unto the work of God. Great to be with you. We salute your great pastor, his good wife, this incredible uh, congregation. Looking forward to hear the preaching and the word of the Lord tonight. God bless you. Brother Jackson, come on up here while he's coming. If you're a pastor, missionary, evangelist, full-time ministry here tonight, would you please stand? Stand here tonight. Let's welcome our ministry. We are really, really glad for all of you that have joined this service tonight. God bless you. Brother Jackson. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. We certainly give honor to this local assembly and the tremendous job that you have done in giving of your time and finances and effort to uh, make the transition to such a beautiful building and prime property. And it's exciting to see what God is doing to Pastor and Sister Calhoun, Sister Chanel, and the rest of their family. We give them double honor tonight for the way that they are leading you. Aren't Brother and Sister Calhoun doing such a tremendous job, Landmark? And you, you, can, you can tell that not by your applause, but just in pulling up in the parking lot and seeing ushers standing out in the cold and not frowning and griping, but smiling and directing and then walking inside and being greeted by happy people and then walking into the sanctuary and feeling the presence of the Lord. It really is a wonderful thing. And I'm excited about where you're at, but I'm really excited about what God's getting ready to do. God bless you tonight, and thank you for allowing us to be here.
let's worship him. Anybody free? He whom the Son has set free, he is free indeed. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sounds like freedom in him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. God bless you. you may be seated. We'd also like Brother Julio May and Brother Jeff Dykes and um, Brother John Hare to be ready to speak soon. We'll call you in just a moment. But, um, oh, I need to mention also, uh, ministers and your immediate families, there is a dinner provided here at the church for you in the cafe. Am I right about that? Um, the line forms behind me, if you're wondering where that is. But uh, that meal will be for you and your families uh, after service tonight. Uh, regards sent by Brother Nathan Hurst and his wife, Sister Rhonda Hurst. Greetings in Jesus' lovely name. Sister Hurst and I are absolutely delighted with what is happening in Texarkana. Your beautiful new church property and facilities setting right out on Interstate 30 is a testimony of a growing church being blessed of the Lord under good leadership. Congratulations on 19 years of moving forward and working together. Our hearts rejoice with you today, brother and sister Hurst. Praise God. Amen. Well, Brother Dykes, where are you? He was really mad before church. I hope he's in a better mood now that we've had some worship and stuff. No, I'm just teasing. I'm having fun at these guys' expense. Brother Dykes, God bless you. Glad you're here. Praise God. Good to be in the house of God tonight. And uh, what a wonderful, wonderful event. What a beautiful celebration. And uh, we're celebrating Brother and Sister Calhoun's 19th anniversary. And uh, <clears throat> I remember... Uh, when when this was just uh, talk among the brethren, you know, about Texarkana getting a new pastor and uh, somebody said something about the Calhouns and uh, I said, well, they'll do good. I said, we know Sister Calhoun will be an excellent pastor and Brother Calhoun's an incredible preacher. And uh, I still feel that way. He is one of my favorite preachers, and I love this family very, very much. And it's very evident that the Spirit of God and the blessings of God has been on this church and upon this leadership. And I thank God for what God is doing. What a beautiful facility that God has blessed you all with right out here on uh, I-30, the main highway. And we rejoice with you. And uh, we're expecting to hear about mighty revival. I believe that, I believe that this, is, this is part of revival. This is part of the process. God has put you in a wonderful location, and you've got incredible leadership. And uh, I am so excited that we can be here to celebrate with you all. We love you very much. Praise the Lord. Brother John Hare. Brother John Hare, where are you? Come on up here. For reasons that shall remain unspecified. I love when Brother Hare shows up somewhere. Praise God. He said he doesn't feel like the dumbest person in the room when he sees me. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. It's a privilege to be here tonight. And I am so thankful to have the Holy Ghost and be surrounded with apostolic legacy. My wife and I both are preacher's kids. Her dad's Brother Strevel. And... Um, I've mentioned it many times to her that I'm so grateful for our heritage. I feel like we are the product of choices that our parents made in the 70s and in and the 80s or where they would expose us to different influences. Some of those heroes are here tonight, Brother Holmes, grown up all around him. Uh, when I was a very little boy, Brother Dykes was a great elder in our life. Uh, but I am, uh, I'm thankful for the choices that our parents made. And here we are now pastoring 
and uh, associating with different ministries. And I can't think of a better influence to have on my children than brother and sister Calhoun and their family. And I love them. I esteem them highly. It is a, it's just a thrill for, to drive up, as Brother Jackson mentioned, and just see Landmark right on the interstate. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going places. We are going forward. And I'm looking forward to the ministry tonight. We're just going to rejoice. Somebody came here to rejoice. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord praise tonight. Praise the Lord. Hermano May. Aquí se siente la presencia de Dios. I better stop. I'll offend every Spanish-speaking person in this place. Start a fight. We're glad you're here, brother. Come give us a word. Gloria a Dios y Dios lo bendiga a todos. Amen. So honored to be here at Landmark Pentecostal. I remember uh, I was here, it seemed like a, a couple of years ago or a year and a half ago, celebrating uh, a milestone in Pastor Calhoun's life and graduation uh, when he got his degree. And now, man, that other spot. And I saw this and said, this is unbelievable. I really, I'm, I'm, I feel like, and I hate to do this because I know I'm going to get myself in trouble with all my great friends that I have here. But I remi I'm reminded of the Queen of Sheba. I don't want to say I almost said I feel like, but then. The, so I've, I'm reminded of the Queen of Sheba, how she saw what Solomon had built. And she said, oh, my goodness, the half has not even been told. And I, I'm really am excited and grateful for what God is doing here. Um, this is uh, a testimony to all of the uh, other churches in the area. Uh, especially those that are represented here, to see what God is, is opening up and allowing us to be able to influence. We understand that it's just not about the location, but my goodness, when you couple location with anointing, amen, that's, that's something powerful. The Bible says in Psalm 133 that there is where the Lord will send blessing and life everlasting. I believe that Psalm 133 is being fulfilled here in this house tonight. So honored to be here. Glad that uh, uh, God has blessed the Landmark Church and uh, the Calhoun family these 19 years. Love and appreciate uh, these excellent, excellent Christians and uh, expecting a great word from God tonight. Dios lo bendiga ricamente. Vamos adelante en el nombre de Jesús. Amen. You want me to interpret that, brother? Hallelujah. Brother Calhoun wanted to mention, too, we're glad to have Brother Sora here tonight, Brother Townley. And there's other ministry here we will be hearing from also as the weekend unfolds. God bless. We're going to sing and worship the Lord together.
right now. Let's join together in worshiping the Lord. Would you do that? I thank you, Jesus. God, I praise you and worship you. I exalt your name. 
Hallelujah. Why don't you lift up your voice high unto the Lord. I thank you, Jesus. God, I give praise to you right now. Hallelujah. 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 Don't you feel his presence in this house? Praise God. Praise God. Amen. You have honored us by being here this evening and joining with us as we dedicate this new facility facility the Lord has given to us. My, what the Lord has done for Landmark Pentecostal Church. And we're very thrilled and excited about it. And as I tell this church often, God gets all the glory for this. And we're thankful. Amen. So you'll just have to excuse us if we get a little bit excited because we're thrilled about what God is doing and the blessings of the Lord. You can be seated for just a few moments. I wanted to make mention of a few people that is here tonight. Uh, we're so honored for all of the ministry that is here and also other guests that is with us this evening. It is good to see my friend, longtime friend, Brother Kelly Patrick, with us and uh, surprised me by being here this evening. We're so thankful and honored that he's here. It's good to see Brother Sammy Draper and his wife from Tyler here with us, longtime friends, and we appreciate them and honor them. And it's also very good to have Brother Kelly Nix we have his daughter here helping us with the music. And aren't these musicians and singers doing a tremendous job tonight? We appreciate them so very much. And it's good to see Brother and Sister Burgess with us also, all the way from Mississippi. And I uh, appreciate all of you being here. And I have some special guests here with me tonight. I'm thankful to have my mother and father. Uh, why don't you guys stand up? Dad, why don't you stand up? Mom, this is my mom and dad. I appreciate them and love them very much, and I'm thankful for my godly heritage. And this, I'm adopted at the age of just two months old. I was adopted. I was born in the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I was adopted. Many of you know the story. And uh, for 48 years, 47 years, I didn't really know anything about any of the biological side of my family and uh, through Ancestry.com and 23andMe and all of these other new things that have came out, I was able to discover a few things, but most of it just distant relatives and things of this nature. And finally, I received a call one afternoon from a young man that was a first cousin of mine in the city of Tulsa and discovered some things about my biological family. And then I was connected with the only one that I know on my biological mother's side and uh, my cousin from Reno, Nevada. This is the first time that I know of that she's been in an apostolic church service, but she chose to come and celebrate with us, and we're so thrilled that she's here. Amy, why don't you stand for just a moment? Let the folks see you. Amen. We're so thankful that you're here and uh, thrilled that she came to be with us tonight. And I couldn't go without mentioning my wife and my family. It's so good to have such a tremendous wife that supports and everything that we do. Sister Calhoun, stand. She's been working so hard this last week, and I really appreciate it. And my daughter Chanel singing up here, and my son Christopher and his wife Elisa. And uh, Little Red's around here somewhere. He don't like us to call him that. But my grandson, Robert, is here, and uh, we're just glad for what God is doing. This has been a good year for the Calhoun family. It's been a good year for this church family. And don't mind us as we celebrate a little bit here tonight. Is that okay? Praise the Lord. And I have told, I have told this church that the thing that we desire to do more than anything else is just to have good Holy Ghost church. Amen. And just, uh, just have it old-fashioned apostolic style and we want God to move and we'd like to break the, I don't know what all they did in this building before we got here but we shout we pray we get behind the preaching of the Word of God we love the Word of God so would you stand with me we're not going to delay this service any longer we're going to bring the man of God and I am so thankful we're going to be hearing from Bishop Holmes tomorrow night I'm so honored that he would agree uh, to be here, and I think I I saw Brother Bourne here. I see, I'm so thankful that he is here. Brother Adams, Brother Adams, 
I'm so thankful that the Adams family is here. Amen. God bless them. But it's good to have all of my friends here to celebrate with us. Many more that would like to be here. These are crazy times, but I'm thankful for all of you that see the importance of just pressing on and letting God have his way. And uh, Brother Holmes is going to be helping us dedicate this facility tomorrow night. And I'm looking forward to that. And then over the weekend, I, I tried to choose men that had inspired me uh, and maybe in some cases pushed me. I think Brother Holmes kind of pushed me off the ledge a couple of times. I called him and asked him what he thought about all of this. And he said, you know what? I feel good about it. I think you ought to proceed. And so uh, I'm thankful to have men of God like this in my life that stretch me. And don't allow me just to get comfortable. Brother Mayo is going to be preaching on Sunday morning. And also Brother Marks, who's been an integral part of this church for many years, is going to be preaching Sunday night. But Brother Tuttle is one of the finest preachers of my generation uh, to stand behind a pulpit. And I appreciate him consenting to be with us tonight at this august occasion. And I want him to come, take his liberty, preach whatever the Lord has placed upon his heart. How many is going to preach with the preacher? God bless you, Brother Tuttle. We're thankful that you're here. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody else. And praise the Lord, everybody that just woke up. There, you confessed. You, you actually said praise the Lord on that one. It's incredible. Uh, Judges chapter 16, verse 20. Familiar passage of scripture this evening in our hearing as we stand in honor of the word of the Lord and, and these great men of God, which we have so pr been privileged to hear from already. And uh, just having men of God like that, there's spirit in the room. I tell my church all the time, it's not just what the man says, it's who the man is. And I want the spirit of those men, men like this, that you're surrounded with uh, this weekend, Landmark, soak up their spirit. Amen? These truth-loving men. And I celebrate and commend you the hard work and the wonderful effort that you have made in acquiring this tremendous building. Much has been said and will be said, but let me just throw my tip in and say, wow, tremendous, 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 beautiful. I'm glad to see, I believe the apostolic church deserves and should be, we should expect to be the largest church, not the largest church, the largest buildings in our city. I'm glad six other people agree with me. The rest of y'all, please don't come divide her. I don't want you. I want people, come on, that believe that the app. Hey, I'll pack up and go home if you're happy with this. This isn't, this isn't, this is just where we begin on I-30. Going to be a long night. I said, this is just where we begin on I-30. This is just the fellowship hall for the next meeting. This is just the closet where we're going to be storing stuff in for what God has for us. Come on. Don't miss what's next. Couldn't help but sit there and wonder about how sorry you feel for the people that gave up on God last year. Gave up on God in 2020. They got the, the virus fear and gave up on God. And here they are. Isn't it amazing? Right before you, you, right after you give up. Ask old Judas. He walks out in John chapter 13. And he walked out for some money. John chapter 14. The next chapter. In my father's house are, you, are many mansions. You want some gold? Just wait a few. Just wait one chapter. Let the page turn and you'll find. I wonder if I had somebody that the page has just turned and you walked into the building tonight. Come on. You, were, you contemplated 30 pieces of silver, but there's a mansion here tonight. There's hope here tonight. There's greater things than we could ever imagine. What a wonderful presence. Amen. I honor the Calhoun family. The ministry that will follow me, and we are just so blessed. I'm thankful to have my dear friend, Brother Juan Negron, from Germany, where he pastors uh, the American military, along with the national church there, and is doing a tremendous, tremendous job, and I'm thankful he is here uh, with me as well. Well, this is just a little Bible study I taught my church, but the Lord just left it in my spirit on driving up today again, and in, my in, in the hotel room praying, and thank you for the nice room, and 
all the basket with all the Bucky stuff and tremendous. And the food in the back, it's just first class. I love it. Amen. But I just want to talk to you for a few minutes on the opening night of this, uh, this meeting. Judges chapter 16, 20. If you're there, say amen. And we're concluding and kind of interrupting a familiar passage for the sake of time. And she, being Delilah, she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. Amen. For a few minutes, just a simple little title, The Source of Our Strength. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to know where your strength comes from. you got to know where your strength comes from. If I can get a little more monitor, I really need to hear this one. If you believe there's one God, why don't you raise your hands up into heaven? Father, I love you and I thank you for your goodness and your mercy, for your sweet spirit, for the love of God that's evident in this room, your presence, your people. Father, they attest and affirm to the fact that you are in this room. And I pray you would anoint me, God. If I do a great job, you get the credit. If it doesn't go well, I'll take the blame. I need you, Jesus. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Wow, pretty good if you're Trinitarian, Brother Jackson. But I said if you're a one God, Jesus name, tongue talking, holy roller. Come on. You ought to say in Jesus' name. Put your hands together as we honor the name that is above every name. And you can be seated in the presence of this holy God. As we celebrate this evening an incredible and outstanding accomplishment for Landmark Pentecostal Church and the Calhoun family and every member that has participated and helped make this evening possible. I understand as I walk in tonight that this didn't just happen, that there was a lot of prayer and a lot of fasting. There was hours. There was a lot of giving that went in. I want to thank the great people of this church. Thank you for giving so that this can happen. Thank God for great people, amen, that give for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And, and so I'm thankful, and I, I'm just the, the foundation to what was going to be an incredible, incredible celebration of this great accomplishment. And I'm aware that much will be said about the future, but this evening I do think it's imperative that we're reminded of the source or where our strength comes from. We turn to perhaps one of the most famous Bible characters of all. No doubt the strong, he was the strongest man physically recorded in the Bible. We know his father's name to be Manoah. His uh, mother, we do not know her name. And And they desire to have children, but the womb is barren until the angel of the Lord comes. And, of course, most of you are familiar with the story. He says, you're going to have a child, but this child will be not, he will be unlike any other child. He's going to bring great victory. It was the plan of God that Samson would eradicate once and for all the the nemesis, the long-term nemesis, the the enemies of God's people, the Philistines. And and he said, in order to have a, a child that will make a difference in the world, the child will have to be different from the world. Well, I got it. That's right. And an amen and one clap. So maybe that, you know what that means? That means you just stay there until you get more than one clap and an amen. I said, in order to make change in the world, uh, the angel of the God of the Lord said, there's going to have to be a boy that's different from the world. Uh, I know we got a nice building and I know we got a fancy sign and I know we got a name. Come on. uh, But let's not forget uh, that we're not going to change a world that we're like. I said, we cannot be like them and change them. But there is a world, uh, thousands of people that drive up and down this highway uh, every day of their lives. uh, And they're saying, I need something to change. uh, And they're going to come into the house. And I believe uh, they're going to find people that are different uh, that can bring change into their lives. Uh, Hallelujah. So you, in order to birth it, will have to be different. Mama, you're going to have to not drink and you're going to have to refrain from the unclean thing uh, in order to birth what God has. Uh, Not only does the child have to be separate, uh, the mother has to be separate. Uh, We have to commit ourselves uh, to this vow. And so the Nazarite vow is placed uh, upon Samson. In Numbers chapter uh, 6, you can find it. Uh, He was not to drink alcohol. He was never uh, to touch a dead body or a a carcass of any dead thing. Uh, He was never to cut his hair. 
And so it is that Samson would bring tremendous victory. That was God's plan for his life, that he would bring great victory to the people of God. And, it's, and he does, and he, he has this amazing strength. He, he kills a lion with his bare hands, 30 Philistines at one point, a 1,000 with just uh, the donkey's uh, uh, jawbone, and, and amazing victories. But there's one thing that stands out as I'm reading the story of Samson. He, all of his victories were done solo. Never once does he link up with somebody else and say, you know what, I'm just going to get together. He could have put together an army with that kind of talent, with that kind of strength, with that kind of position. Uh, he could have put together a whole lot of men, uh, but he was spiritual. He was powerful. Man, he could do things by himself. He prayed and he fasted by himself and he didn't have to go to church and he didn't have to link up with anybody else. Come on, somebody. Uh, he failed to realize uh, that no matter how strong he was, uh, he needed someone else. He needed to link up with somebody else. Uh, I've got to remind, come on, Landmark Pentecostal Church. Uh, you're a powerful church. Uh, you're a dynamic church. Uh, you're a, come on, a global reaching church. Uh, it's not just for you to hoard the... It's not for us to hoard the glory of God. But it's that out of this building there's preachers that go out. Evangelists that are birthed out of this. Missionaries that come out of this. Come on, we can be strong. But if we're solo by ourselves, we do not make it. We need each other. I said we need each other. We need each other. We've got to have each other. We've got to link up together. Samson was not afraid. Samson knew the power of the people of God. He was not afraid of the Philistine or the lion. He was not afraid of his adversary. He wasn't afraid of the devil. Perhaps you remember in Judges 15 and 12, there the, 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 the Judah comes and says, we're going to bind you and, and we're going to take you. And, and the people of God are talking to him. And, and Samson, he says to them, he says, look, he says, don't kill me. Don't kill. Who's he talking to? This dude could slay 1,000 men by himself. He could take a lion on with his bare hands. Uh, but he looked at the people of God and said, I know you could kill me. Uh, you could take me out, Judah. Let me just tell you something that the enemy is wise. I feel this. It's not in my notes. Uh, I got it sitting right there. Uh, the enemy is wise. Uh, I said he's wise. Uh, and he has no power over us. Uh, but we've got to come together uh, and realize the only thing that can stop the church is the church. Come on, you ought to get with your brother and say, you know what? That's right. I'm with you, brother. I'm in this together. We've got to come together like never before. Like never before. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If I say, Samson, you, you think Delilah. You think failure and because his life as a whole and compared to what it should have been was a failure. All of it comes down to the person he was in relationship with. He was in relationship with the wrong individual. Who we link up with, and I think Brother Hare said it, but who we link up with matters. I said, who we are in relationship with matters. I thought y'all just wanted to have church. I said, who we're in relationship with, it matters. He's linked up with seduction. The enemy of God's people had tried to attack. They had sent a thousand men. Lions had come against him, but what one thousand men could not accomplish. One woman. All the women ought to say, man. One spirit of seduction. Delilah, her name means feeble. <laughs> Strongest man in the Bible, taken out by a feeble spirit of seduction. A cheap spirit of seduction is what took him down. I said, I'll say it again. A cheap spirit of sin. Read Judges. Read it again. And the enemy said, I can't win this fight. I can't win it on the word. I can't win it in the spirit. So I'll win it in seduction. 
I got to, come on, I'm gonna, I, I, I know you guys expect to dance, but I got to preach what God gave to me. I, I've got to talk to 2022 in this church and let you know you got to guard yourself because the spirit of 2022 is the spirit of seduction. I, I said it's fighting against us. We have conquered. We have been victorious. We have come through trying times. The adversary has been defeated. But there is a spirit of seduction that's being released on the apostolic movement. I know it's, I know it's dedication, but it's what I feel in my heart. And what we need are more things that kill our flesh, not seduce our flesh. What we need is more prayer than we've ever had. More fast. I know we've got nice lights and I, I know we got great sound and we got leaders and, and now we've got paid worship leaders at conferences but baby don't get to the place where you're seduced by the stuff and fail to kill the flesh come on you might dim the lights a little but but don't black out the sanctuary uh, what's up with that uh, oh well we want to have all the lights on the stage and we need fog and lights why are we turning i'm off it i'm gonna stay on it though why are we turning the lights off in the sanctuary why are we making it dark Maybe it's because we don't want them to see us doing this. Is it because we're ashamed of who we are? Is it because we don't want to see? Does the pulpit not want to see the minister? Does the pulpit not want to see the unholy action? Turn the lights on. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God. I didn't come to have my flesh seduced. I came to have my spirit revived. If it can get Samson, it can get me. Four times. He lays his head in her lap. Tell me what it is. She pleads. She starts pushing with him. She starts. She press, the Bible says she presses him. The spirit of seduction it puts pressure on you. Mm. Conform to me. Give in to me. Come be like everybody else. Well, all the other people are doing it. Well, the charismatic movement says that this is how you grow. They are not the source of our strength. They are not the source of our strength. The flesh is not the source of your strength. The quality of your music is not the source of our strength. The eloquence in the pulpit is not the source of our strength. Come on, I know you got a new ministry plan. That's not the source of what we're going to do. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I come against every spirit of flesh. I come against the spirit that would seduce the people of God into believing there's another way other than a prayer room before they get on a platform, other than fasting before they preach, other than worship that makes us look the fool to the world. Forgive us. We repent of it. We will not be seduced by it in the name of Jesus. What is the source if you use the bow strings? She, so she ties them up in bow string. She wakes it up. Samson, the Philistines are upon you. She was right. They were. Pow. He takes the AR-15, bends it in half, blows up the tank. Goes back, head again. What's the source of your power? He says, well, for new ropes. He goes to sleep, wakes up. The Philistines! He's tied up in new ropes. Goes back, kills the Philistine. Goes back, lays down. Says, well, if you braid my hair. She braids his hair in, while he's asleep. And once again, and, and, and look. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I'm not a genius, but by the second time, I had it figured out. Come on, you know you were sitting in Sunday school looking at your teacher thinking, that dude's an idiot. How on earth? Come on, right, for real. How on earth? You're going to wake up 
two times and then go back for a th- and then go back for another time this girl is not Good. That relationship is not, everybody's telling you it doesn't work. Everybody in your circle that cares about you is telling you that's not the way. Everybody that really loves you is trying to tell you that's not the way you should go. But, but you still keep doing it. You still keep believing that somehow this is going to work. When everybody says don't do it, you keep doing it. What's the problem? Why on earth is he doing it? Well, you got to look. You got to look. You'll find out why he did it. Judges 16 and 15, she says to him, How how can thou how canst thou say, I love thee? If you love me. Now here's this little tip, men. When she says, if you love me, get your credit card. Put it in the safe. (laughs) Get the car keys. Put them up. Just everything of value needs to be hidden because it's about to cost you a lot of money. If you love me. Why is your heart not with me? She appeals to his heart, not his faith. She appeals to his heart, not even his head. She said, if you love me, she said, you would make this decision based on your heart. But Jeremiah said that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So I, I looked up what the meaning of the word heart is, and it's lab in Hebrew, and it means feeling. She said, oh, come on, somebody. She said, why don't you love me? Listen to how I make you feel. Listen to how I'm, oh, i got to talk to somebody. And Jeremiah said, uh, those feelings of yours are deceitful. You can't count on those feelings. Uh, don't build your church on the feeling. Uh, don't build your spiritual walk on the feeling. Uh, Oh, I'm, come on, I'm preaching to somebody. You're still paying visa for when you listen to the feelings. You're still paying child support for she was the seducer. And seduction appeals to how I feel. Come on, that's the problem with Christianity today. We've got a bunch of people that say, well, you know what? I just don't feel it at this church anymore. I don't feel I, We've lost this love and feeling. Baby, your vow did not include a feeling. You made a promise, and you said, I'm going to stick with her till the day I die. When you stood up here and dedicated that child and said, I'll be faithful to the house, we didn't ask you if you was going to come if you felt like it. We... Come on. That's why we've got feeling-driven churches. Uh, feeling, I, well, I, I feel. You know, the, the, the old song, some, of, some people deify the old songs more than they do Jesus. And most of them I like, but here's this song goes, I feel like traveling. Oh, that's not a good song. Because I don't always feel like traveling on. There's days I don't feel like clapping my hands. Uh, There's days I don't feel like running the aisles. Uh, There's days I don't even feel like getting up to pray. But but I get up even though I don't feel it. Uh, I get up. I said I do it in spite of what I feel. Uh, Oh, well, I've got feelings for another woman. Uh, It doesn't matter what your feelings are. It's about the faith in the facts uh, and the promise you made to God. This is about a promise, a landmark that you made to God. Come on, you made the promise to God. And Samson was destroyed because he listened to how she made him feel. Well, I don't feel like clapping my hands. I don't feel like shouting. I don't, who cares? Who cares how you feel? Who cares how I feel? It's about what he's worthy of. Well, you know, it just doesn't feel... Like the old building yet. It'll take a little while till we get to feeling it in the new building. We just got to break. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, I, I know it doesn't feel like the old building, baby, because it ain't the old building. Well, we got to just break it in. Let's do that right now. 
we've been bumping up against tension this whole service. Y'all sitting there staring at us. Get up and break through. I know it feels tight, but you know what to do when you feel the shadow of death. It's just a shadow. You know what to do when you feel the fear of a roar. It's just a roar. It's not a reality. It's just a shadow. It's not death. It's just a feeling of fear. And so when I'm afraid and I'm bumping up against something, what I do, come on. Is that where your feelings tell you to stop? Then listen to them. I say where your feelings say stop clapping, always clap a few more beyond it. Uh, where your feelings say stop jumping, jump up just to let them know you don't control me. Uh, you don't determine if I sit in my pew uh, or if I stand up for ice. I, I, I will bless the Lord at all times. Uh, at all, his praise shall continually be in my, I'm just going to do it uh, because the Bible says give thanks unto the Lord because he is good. Uh, you've got to put your hands together. Not because you feel anything. Uh, just because you know God is good. Uh, listen to the facts of faith. Uh, the facts are we did it. Uh, the facts are you paid it off. Uh, the facts are you're paying the bills and you're in the new building. Uh, somebody ought to give him praise on the facts, not the feeling. Man, this is pretty good if I was at a golf match, but I thought I was with apostolics. I thought I was with one Darius. Somebody ought to say, I'm going to be the first one to roll the aisles. I'm going to be the first one to speak in tongues. I'm going to be the first one to have the all-night prayer meeting. I'm going to be the first one. We're going to make it feel like it used to be. And even when it doesn't, we're going to bless the Lord. He seduces you with fear, holding you silent. Hell can do nothing. All it can make is sounds that induce a feeling. Roar! That's not a, that's not a lion. It's, it's just a roar. Shadow, and I'm afraid, but it's, it's not death. It's just the shadow. He can't kill you or harm you. All it can do is make you afraid. And if you listen to the fear, you still be sitting in your house. Wearing a mask to bed, ordering your groceries on. Come on, son. I don't care what you do, you can do it. But, but one thing you shouldn't do is be afraid. Ooh, come on. I just said the curse word, four letter word, mask. Hey, it scares everybody. It scares everybody. Oh, boy. Oh, it's a, what's, what's the community go? Who cares? What matters is what does God think? How does He feel about me living in continual fear? How does it continue? Come on, stay at Do whatever you do. Watch online. I, I don't know, but as for me, I got to get to church. I'm not going to let the roar of the lion deter me. Oh, when I feel fear, I fight back. Come on, when you feel tension a little bit in the spirit, what I'm feeling in this room, I don't let it stay like this at my church, Brother Wesley. If we, let me, the other Sunday, we were having prayer in the sanctuary. And it felt like it does about right now. And I got up and I said, you know what? I'm just not going to preach today. Here's why. I got seed to sow. And we got to have fertile soil. And this atmosphere is not conducive to what God would speak into the hearts of men. How many of you have been in this longer than 10 years? Look, look around you. 10 years. We know what to do. Stop waiting on me to bring revelatory truths about 
Little kid stories you believed all your life in order to get up on your feet, you know what to do. You can feel the oppression of this city in this room. You can feel the fear of hell sitting on the pillow. It's on the, it's on the congregation tonight, but I come in the name of Jesus. There's an oppression on this room because hell's afraid of you and he's trying to utilize and seduce you with fear to think that you cannot do it. In the name of Jesus, you can have revival. In the name of Jesus, you are going to pay the bills. I rebuke the spirit of fear that's come upon you and your family in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus come on it's dedication weekend it's anniversary time let's have church let's do what we know not what we feel hell can try to control your feelings but he can't control the word of God he can't control the truth that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Now somebody ought to shout. You ought to shout until you feel like stopping and then you ought to shout a little more. I said you ought to shout until you feel like quitting and then shout a little longer. You ought to dance until you feel like quitting and then dance just a little more. I will not be deterred by my feelings. Somebody shout Jesus. I'll tell you why he lost his power. Because he started listening to how he felt. Now there's times your feelings are good. But they will all be, always be in alignment with that word. And when your feelings say be afraid, that's against the word. When your feelings say don't worship, you're tired, that's against the word. When your feelings say, you know what, it feels tight. Now I just don't, I'm worried about what all the visitors are going to think about me. That's not, that's not the word of God. That's your feelings and they're wrong. You, you got to filter your feelings through the word of God. I, I said you got to filter that feel. I feel it in the Holy Ghost. I know you've been talking to her and now you got feelings for this other person. But just because you're feeling it, it's not in alignment with the word of God. You've got to stay to the promise that God has made and that you have made before the Lord. He lays his head in that lap because he felt it. She starts cutting the hair. Actually, she brought a dude in to do it. She shakes him and says, wake up, they're on you again. The Bible says he got up. I can't find how old he is, between 20 and 30, but so say 25 years of long hair. I mean, these, this, is a, this is a mess of a hairdo. This dude, I mean, they didn't have suave, they didn't have all these fancy hair products. He stunk. You're going to be a little different. You're going to be a little different. And 25 years of hair is off his head. You, the Bible doesn't say it, but there's absolutely no way he did not know that. Come on, dudes, you at the barber, and you're like, give me a number four, and she hits you with the number one. You don't have to look in the mirror. You're like, what'd you do? What number, what number is that? Well, that's a number one. I said number four. Oh, I'm so, so look, I'm not joining, I'm in the Lord's army, but it don't require a number one. So you can't tell me 25 years, and all of a sudden it's gone. He got up, shook himself, and realized it's gone. My hair is gone. But watch what he says. I'll go out, and I'll do it like I did it before. He lost the power because he, he listened to his feelings, and he got high on past success. Well, we did it before. We'll, we'll just do it again. We'll, you know what? We'll just do it like we've always done it. I, I'll go out and I know how to do it. I know what to do. And he doesn't pray. He doesn't ask God. He doesn't fast. He doesn't consult with his maker. I, I've got to ask you this. Is there anything in your life that you're doing uh, that you don't pray about? <laughs> 
Is there any place in your life that you've gotten to the place where you no longer, I know we're in the nice building now and we got the cool lights on the side of the building and the fancy stage and the cordless mic and more screens, uh, come on, than you could ever count. But baby, there's never a day in our lives uh, where it doesn't need to be birthed uh, and bathed uh, in the prayer room. Uh, we I know you had some great victories in your past. I know you sold peanut brittle or whatever you did. But let me just remind you, the old timers had it wrong when I feel like traveling. But they had it right when they said, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. The new building's not big enough for us to not to have Holy Ghost prayer meetings. I said the, the beautiful Nord keyboard isn't fancy enough. In order for us to not have apostolic crazy worship, it's still going to take what it took. But oh, don't get to the place where we're so good that we no longer... We don't need holiness. We don't need truth. We, we've got it all figured out. I will go. And I will shake. And I. And I will be unlike unto the most high. And I. We'll set my, my, my throne there next to him. I will establish myself over the stars. I will set myself on the counter. I, 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 I. The minute you think I can do it without God, you're in the lap of Delilah. And we're at the end. No matter how big and beautiful our buildings get, let's not forget it's not because of I. Oh, but I've, preacher, I've done it like this. And I, I've been preaching and we've been having church. I, I mean, I don't pray. I sing the solo. It's been years since I prayed before. I say, I don't I, I'm doing it on my own. Yeah. You start thinking you're like Samson. Couldn't drink wine. Couldn't touch dead things. Couldn't cut his hair. But he's at a wedding. Seven days. And all indications would say he drank. He sees a lion, kills it and goes back, touches a carcass. He drank and didn't lose his power. He touched the dead thing, didn't lose his power. Whew. So now by just deduction and comp math, we would say, well, if it's not in the wine and it's not in the carcass, then it must just be in my hair. That's, that's God. I've always wondered why. why. Why God didn't slay him when he touched the dead animal. Why God didn't slay him when he was drinking. I'll tell you why. Because God's merciful. I said God's merciful. He'll forgive your humanity. He'll forgive your stupidity. He touches. He got to the place so filled with pride, ladies and gentlemen, and dear friends. He said, I don't have my hair. I don't have God but I'll go. And he didn't even know the glory of the Lord had left him. The truth of the matter is, it, the power was not that came, the source of it was not in the fact that he didn't drink. It wasn't in the fact that that wasn't even in his hair. But let's go down just a few verses before the accomplishments in Judges 14 and 19. And the Bible says, And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he went down to Ashkelon and slew 30 men of them. Uh, Judges 14 and 6 and the spirit of the Lord uh, came mightily upon him and he rent him as he would have rent a kid uh, and nothing in his hand but he told, come on somebody uh, Judges 15 and when he came uh, to Lahai uh, the Philistines shouted against him and the spirit of the Lord uh, came mightily uh, upon him. Uh, let me just tell you something uh, that every victory in my life uh, there's a verse right before it and you know what it says? Uh, the spirit of the Lord came on Matthew Tuttle it wasn't because I was so good the truth is his mercy has reached past and forgiven me for my humanity his mercy has reached to me when I was being stupid it was always Jesus it was a landmark you don't want to know why we're here because of the spirit of the Lord and we can't go into the rest of this without the Holy Ghost we can't go into the next chapter without speaking in tongues and running in the aisles
Prayer got us here. Fasting got us here. Worship got us here. One God Jesus name preaching got us here. Holiness living got us here. Owl running got us here. Dancing got us here. Rolling on the floor got us here. So you know what? If that's what brings the spirit, I say we keep doing what we've always done. What if he would have looked at Delilah? Where does your strength come from? What if he just said, oh, my strength? My strength comes from God. An invisible spirit that fills all time and space. You can't, you can't bind him or mess with him. You know what Delilah would have done? She would have ran over to the Philistines and say, you guys need to get out of here. You got this dude. He's battling with an invisible power. This dude knows it's not in himself. Hey, friends, if we want the demons of Texarkana to flee, we've got to get up and start saying, it's because of the Lord. It's because of the Lord. I'm almost there. He's got his head in the lap, thinking it's his hair. That somehow all the strength and the power and the victories that they've had are linked to him. And oh, the only way you're going to have revival is if I sing the solo, or if I preach, or if I. I, I, it's, it's me. It's all of our fancy stuff. We're so caught up in all this stuff. I'm not saying it's wrong, but we don't need it. Ooh, I'll say it again. Ain't nothing wrong with it, but we don't need it. I said we don't need it. There's only one thing that we need, and it's the one thing we seemingly fail to pursue passionately. What we need... It's for the Spirit of the Lord to come into this building. What the cancer treatment needs is the Spirit of the Lord. What the divorced family in the battle for their kids, it needs is the Spirit of the Lord to put them back together. What our world needs, it needs the Spirit of the Lord. Yes, write new songs. Yes, preach beautiful sermons. Yes, have beautiful buildings. But don't forget the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord. There's no sermon I can preach that I I don't need the Holy Ghost. There's no church service I want to have and realize God is not even near us. His mercy will reach and forgive your humanity. His, His mercy reaches down and it It'll forgive your stupidity. But there is, I've found the end. It's your pride. It's the one place his mercy can't get. He would have forgiven him if he'd have had a spirit that wasn't one of pride. Somehow it concerns me a little bit. And I've got a beautiful building. God's been good. But I don't ever want my beautiful car and beautiful building. I, I like my beautiful car and my beautiful building. I'm not saying I want it to be taken, but if I've got to pick. I don't ever want to get out in my parking spot in my nice suit and think, I got this. I don't want my praise team to, to practice right up until church starting time because we can just switch the octaves and hit them with that and poof, we got come on. Oh, God, 
I'll mess up and I'll say stupid things and I'll do some stupid things. But God never let me believe that I, that it's because of Matt Tuttle, that it's somehow because of the structure that's so glorious. Whoa, come on, the world has glorious structures. They have fine speakers and wonderful music. But what sets us apart is that we have the glory of God. And the only way we have the glory is if we have the sacrifice. We've got to pray. We've got to worship like never before. Like never before. I want the glory of God in my life. I, I don't want an usher taking up an offering uh, without the glory of the Lord on him. Uh, we don't want you, come on. Uh, we don't want you vi- getting the visitors and welcoming them. Uh, if the glory of the Lord isn't on you, we'll just give them a place. No, no, they, we gotta have, we've got to have the glory of God on them. We've got to have the glory of God. And they lock him up and I'm done. You, you can piddle around He felt his hair come. But you know what he didn't do? He didn't go right to it. The Bible says he felt his hair. He said, God, can I do it? He, again, the hair wasn't it. It was the God, can I do it? Son, if you'd have just asked that a few years ago, you'd have your eyes, you'd have your strength. Not only would you have cut, 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 had those things, the people of God would have been set free and your city would have been transformed. The drug addict would have been free. The prostitute would have been healed. The man is searching when money would have found hope. But because you got to thinking that somehow it was you, not only did you lose your sight, the world lost its witness. Oh God, don't take your presence from me. Don't let the pride of our generation sweep into this church. Keep us humble before you to acknowledge where the source of our strength comes from. It comes from you. And now he said, I'm not, I'm not going to do this one solo. He said, I'm not going to do this one by myself. He's an older man now. That's learned it's not about him. And who did he pick? Who? He picked who? A lad. Just a boy. He understood if this thing's going to last, it's going to have to take me getting together with the next generation. It's going to take me linking up with a young, come on, somebody. Here's what I need you to do. I need an elder to get with somebody younger right now. Uh, I need you to find somebody. Get with them younger. Uh, Peter and John went up together at the hour of prayer. Uh, Peter was the preacher. He's the oldest disciple. John uh, is the youngest disciple. But the Peter, the preacher, uh, come on, the elder, uh, got together. And here's what we're about to do. I need you connected with somebody. And that young boy... Listen to me for one moment. That young boy could look at Samson and say, I refuse to link with you because of past failures. John, the teenager, could have looked at the preacher and said, you cussed and you betrayed him. Uh, There's always some history uh, in the older man's past. Uh, There's always some mistakes uh, in the the generation before us. uh, And we have seen some of them. Uh, You've witnessed some of them. Uh, He's messed up. But but Peter could look down at at John and say, Bubba, you weren't even present. Uh, You've never preached the day of Pentecost. Uh, There's always a reason not to come together. Uh, There's always a reason uh, not to bind together. Uh, But he said, I'm going to pray and I'm not going to do it solo and in that moment uh, the enemy was defeated like never before so here's what we're going to do you're going to link up with a young man elder you're going to link up with a young lady come on sis I need you to be in unity tonight everyone linked up with somebody you're linked up together and here's what we're going to do 
There's a spirit of oppression. We still have not beat it back like we need to. Uh, there's something weighing down right now. Come on, and we're going to come on. We're here visiting uh, from in other cities, uh, other states, uh, and we've come to push back darkness in Texarkana. We've come to have revival in this city and to declare to the adversary. Uh, I need you to link together with that individual. Uh, and on the count of three, I want you to begin to give God the craziest shout of praise. Uh, not just with your mouth, uh, with your feet. Uh, maybe you start leaping a little. Maybe you take your little boy and start running a little bit. Uh, but the darkness is going to be pushed back. Uh, one, two, three. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Yes. Shout until you feel like stopping. And shout a little more. Shout until you feel like stopping. And then shout a little longer. Praise until you feel like stopping. Praise a little more. We're going to push back the spirits of death and suicide. We're going to push back the darkness. We're going to push back the shame. We're going to push back the afflictions of the mind and mental illness. We're going to push back insecurity and fear. We're going to push back the vision of our culture. We're going to push back the vision of our nation. And we're going to say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 